Hey! You're alive! When I dragged you out of the river, I thought you were never gonna wake up. I checked your pockets for ID. A phone, maybe? I hope you don't mind. But all I found was some loose change. So, wanna tell me who you are? Well, it's nice to meet you. And I'm sorry to pry, but any idea why you were floating down the river? What's the last thing you remember? Really? You know what? Don't answer that. I don't think I want to know. Oh, come on. In your state? I could drop you on your butt and drag you right back into that river if I wanted to. Look, you've just been through a trauma, so I'm gonna forget you said that. But you owe me, and I need a favor. There are some ruins just behind you. Roman, I think. I need you to go in there and see if you can find a guy named Al for me. He went in there a few hours ago, and he hasn't come out. I've been freaking out, wondering if he's trapped, or injured, or worse. I would have gone in after him, but he made me promise to stay here, no matter what. There's no way I'm leaving without him. So I'm just kind of... stuck here, waiting. I need... what I mean is... I was hoping you wouldn't mind going in there to find him. If you can do that, I can get both of you back to civilization in my boat. Please? Oh, of course. Sorry, I don't mean to be pushy. I just... What do you want to know? Oh, there's not much to tell. Feels like I've spent my whole life in a dead-end job with an endless commute. Know what I mean? Oh, uh, I'd rather not say if it's all the same to you. All right, fine. Sorry if I sounded cagey, it's just that I don't always get the best reactions when I introduce myself. My name's... Karen. Uh, yeah, something like that. But right now, I have bigger problems, like finding Al. He's the guy who washed up on the riverbank not long before you did. I thought maybe you two knew each other. I guess not. But... Maybe the two of you can piece together what you're doing here. In any case, you'll like him, I'm sure. Once you find him, that is. You really don't remember? We're in Italy. This river is the Tiber. Not much, really. But imagine what you might find in there. Priceless ancient artifacts. Al... What am I, an idiot? You could hike a long, long way in any direction, and never find another soul. Trust me. Great. So you're ready to go look for Al? Are you serious? I just saved your life, and you can't do this one little thing for me. What kind of an ungra- Ugh. Look, if you won't do it for me, do it for yourself. You want to know what you're doing here, right? My hero. The entrance is just past those columns behind you. Oh, and he left this here. But I think you'll need it more than I will.
If you're reading this, it means I've discovered the entrance to an ancient Roman city hidden deep underground. Its existence is long forgotten. All knowledge of it lost, except in the Latin inscription here. It reads, you who wish to enter the city, step forth and be judged. The virtuous shall be rewarded with eternal life in paradise. The wicked shall find themselves showered in gold, but in vain, for this shall be their final resting place. Could an underground city have remained a secret for all this time? Could people have survived down there against the odds? It seems there's only one way to find out. If I'm not back in an hour, I'm somewhere on the other side. Consider this an invitation or a warning. Al Worth.
Whoever reads this, I'm sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, that you'll suffer the same fate I did. I've spent a lifetime in this place, going around and around in circles, searching for a way out. The inscription was right. There is no way back. And here there are only two options. Death, or that godforsaken doorway into the past. I made the mistake of stepping through it. I wanted to set things right. And I tried. I really tried. Whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. Don't make the same mistake. Better to end it all now. Find out what awaits you beyond that portal. Salve, friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Uh, what? I'm speaking Latin. You are too, although your accent's a little strange. Oh, I see what you did there, changing the subject like that. Nice try, but I'll ask again. Who are you, and what were you doing in the shrine? Yeah, you know, agricultural goddess of springtime? You're not from around here, are you? And you've just done it again. You're a sly one, aren't you? One more time. Who are you, and what were you doing in that shrine? Uh, no idea what you're talking about. Oh, wait, are you a bit, you know, not right in the head? <sighs> That's all right, friend. Everyone's welcome here. We sort of lose track of the date down here, but it feels like the beginning of spring to me, so I'd say... Early March? It's 817 AUC. Sorry, you look confused. 817 years since the founding of Rome. Which part of the Empire are you from, exactly? Hey! Not so loud! Just saying that name could land you in trouble here. If you haven't heard, his cultists burned down half of Rome last year. Horrible business. I heard Nero executed some of them, but a lot of people are still angry with them, even down here. So, if you're one of them, keep it to yourself. But listen, most folks seem a bit confused when they get here, but you... you seem very lost, and in more ways than one. So, let me make this nice and simple for you. Live by our law here, and we'll all get along just fine. Not laws, law. There's just one, the golden rule. And the punishment for breaking it's... Well, it's kind of horrific. But our magistrate insists we take all newcomers to see him. So I guess I'll let him fill you in. So then, are you coming? Follow me. When I 
first arrived, I couldn't believe there were people living down here. But, as you can see, we've got a nice little community now. Only 23 of us at the moment, if you count the three who are missing. No idea how, since nobody knows a way out. But it's just big and dark enough to get lost in, if you're not careful. Aren't you going to introduce me to your handsome new friend, Galerius? Keep it in your loincloth, Aurelia. I'm taking him to see the Magistrate. That pompous old boar won't be Magistrate for much longer. Anyone who helps vote him out today, drinks at my bar for free tonight. Ugh, politics. I'd stay clear of it and her, if I were you. She's... uh, it's not my place to say. Down on your right is our farm, where I grow all the food you'll ever want. As long as all you want is leek, cabbage and wheat. Huh, that one usually gets a chuckle. The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Ah, don't mind Livia. She means well, she's just been in a bad place since... Well, you know, I don't know what happened to her. Up here on your right is the chasm. If you've got a weapon, it belongs way down at the bottom. Up on your left is the forum, where you can visit the market or get yourself patched up in Lucretia's clinic in the Shrine of Apollo. Most of us have almost nothing, just what we had on us when we arrived, and what we've been able to make and scrounge up since. And this central plateau is where the Magistrate and the other patricians live, so don't expect a warm welcome. Galerius, you're meant to be working the farm, not trudging dirt into the villas. Take it easy, Horatius. I was just taking our new friend here to see the Magistrate. Well, he's asked me to escort the newcomer personally. The farm. Go. Now. You'd better go with him. But just remember, they're not like you and me. Don't let them use you. What was that? What did you just say? Uh, I said it'll take some getting used to. Yeah, I'm watching you, farm boy. Greetings, citizen. My name's Horatius. Magistrate Sentius asked me to escort you to him personally. Follow me, please. I expect the Magistrate wants to brief you about the Golden Roll. It shouldn't take too long. He's busy preparing for the election later today. I'm afraid I have to insist. Alright. Well, I can't force you. I'll let him know you declined. But he won't be pleased with either of us. I'm a legionary of the First Italica, but there's not a lot of fighting down here. So the Magistrate has assigned me other duties. I act as the Magistrate's right-hand man, keeping an eye on his daughters. Uh, daughter, I should say. And the others and making sure they're all behaving. I also keep a register of new arrivals. I'm from Liguria, up north originally. I was doing all right for myself, 12 years into my service. Had a nice girl lined up for when it was all over. Not anymore. She's probably figured I'm long gone and moved on by now. I try not to think about it. My commander sent me to deliver a message to Rome. While I was there, I thought I'd do something nice for my girl and pick up a little pendant from a silversmith. That's when the crowd started flooding through the streets, shouting fire. People were screaming, trampling each other. Then some genetric and future chill tried to take advantage of the chaos and pinch my pendant. I remember chasing him through the crowds, down towards the river. And then, nothing. Blacked out and woke up near here. No idea how I ended up floating so far down river. But I'm fortunate to be alive, I suppose. Ah, don't be. As Seneca the Younger said, difficulty strengthen the mind as labor does the body. That said, Centilla's disappearance has been more difficult than I'd care to admit. He's one of the better commanders I've ever had, that's for sure. Good stoic. Lives by Seneca's words. Treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Can't ask for much more than that. I went around asking the same questions when I first arrived. Never did find a way out. But I learned how to accept my situation. 
to bear trials where the calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. That's from Seneca the Younger, if you're interested. I don't see why not. Just make sure I get it back by tomorrow. Of course. Well, as I always say, it's kind of like a divine version of the practice of decimation in the Legion. By threatening to execute one in ten men, the idea is to ensure order and discipline among everyone. And it works. If you knew you could be executed because your brother in arms is planning a mutiny, well, you'd bloody well watch him like hundred-eyed Argus, wouldn't you? Because your only chance of saving yourself is to stop bad things before they happen. Makes us all responsible for keeping each other in check. It's brutal, of course, but effective. The Legion wouldn't be the most formidable force in the world without it. War crime? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? As Cicero said, in times of war the law falls silent. Seems that way. War crimes. Ridiculous. What's done is done. I was forced to execute my brothers in arms and those memories will always visit me in my sleep. But life is harsh. And I've come to accept my lot. As with the Golden Rule, I don't have any control over it. So railing against it would be like trying to stop the seasons or the tides. As Seneca the Younger wrote, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient for he that is so wants nothing. If you like. Not that it's any of your business, but my loyalty is and always will be with Sentius. Unfortunately, I don't think my vote is going to make any difference today. See, Domitius has been going around town, shoring up votes for Maliolus with lies, bribery and intimidation. The man's a savage, but he's a gladiator. So people fear and respect him more than they should. Sentius knows about it, of course, but he doesn't have the same rat cunning as Maliolus. This place will be different with that sleaze at the helm. But I try not to worry about things I can't change. I appreciate the thought, but you're new here, and I just can't see how you could make an impact in the time between now and the election this afternoon. In any case, if you're interested in the election, go and have a chat with Equitia, the Vestal Priestess. She'll be overseeing proceedings. All right. What now? All right. Hey Horatius, how does it feel knowing your man's doomed to lose the election today? If you're trying to goad me into an argument, it won't work. I'm a stoic, remember? If the old man couldn't even keep his own daughter safe, how can anyone trust him to keep us safe, eh? Why do I get the feeling you lot had something to do with Centilla's disappearance? That's it. Blame everyone but yourself. If I find out you did something to that poor sweet girl, not even the Golden Rule is going to protect you. Got it? 
<laughs> As if I'll be afraid of you, little man. I wish Horatius would stop letting barbarians in here. What do you want? I'm Sentia, eldest daughter of the Magistrate. But you'd know that if you'd been invited in here and introduced properly. What are you doing in here? And why are you dressed like that? You know, some people say it's the creation of an all-seeing god who's watching everything we do. But what kind of an awful, incompetent god would let my sister go missing on his or her watch? Oh, I'd say it to their faces if they had the courage to show themselves. Did you hear that? Curse you, you coward! Where is my sister? What do you have to say for yourself? No response. Nothing. <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm telling you, this mysterious god of ours has to be asleep on the job. Either that, or like people are saying, it really is just a children's fable my father is exploiting to frighten us into behaving. Hmm. I suppose we will. Ugh, what is it with you people? You heard the rumor that my little sister escaped and figure I must know a way out too. Is that it? Well, that's just a stupid rumor. We have no idea what happened to Centilla. I wish you mouth breathers would just leave me alone. I don't know, can you? Can you tell me how a person could have disappeared from a city with no exits and no crime? Was she snatched away by the harpies? <sighs> it was three weeks ago. We ate our evening meal together, and I remember she seemed happy. In love. We went into our rooms, I went to sleep, and when I woke up, she was gone. That's it. I think so, yes. But she was very careful about keeping his identity a secret, even from me. Because our father had plans to marry her off, eventually, 
And even a rumor about her attachment to some mystery man might have ruined those plans. I don't know, but it's been three weeks since she disappeared and he hasn't come forward. That might speak to a guilty conscience. All I know is, whoever he is, he's still here in the city. You really aren't from here, are you? All Roman women are named after their fathers. I think it's their way of branding us, like cattle to be sold at market. His family name is Sentius, so I'm Sentia because I'm the eldest. And my little sister is formerly Sentia Minor, but she is affectionately known as Sentilla. So you'll help me find her? Oh, thank you. You should probably take a look through her room. It's the one just by the front door. Maybe you'll find something the rest of us missed. Thanks. I'd appreciate it. Of course. What have you discovered? Yes, please do. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? A curious name to match a curious accent. But I digress. Something about your demeanor gives me the urge to caution you against doing anything, shall we say, unlawful while you're here? Is that understood? probably wondering why I summoned you, and I'll get to that. But first, take a look at this wondrous place, would you? A secret city built deep in the mountains, many hundreds of years ago. Indeed. More importantly, consider the miraculous community we've built here over the last seven months. Twenty-two complete strangers, brought together by the fates, living and working together in our own little paradise. And in all that time, not a single sin has been committed. No fights, no theft, nothing. Have you ever witnessed something so extraordinary as a city without sin? Nor could I, until I came here. But the reason for this, this miracle, is as simple as it is terrifying. If even one person commits a sin here, every last one of us will die. You see, the builders of this place, whoever they were, left inscriptions warning, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods and provoke a terrible punishment. Like the curses of Medusa and Midas combined, turning us all to gold. We've come to call it the Golden Rule. It's extraordinary that we've survived as long as we have, and each day I grow more and more afraid that our time in the sun is born. And now it seems that day is finally here. All that matters is that somebody in this city is about to break the Golden Rule. Why else would Proserpina send you now? Unless you and I can stop them, our doom is assured. I know that's a lot to take in, and you look like you have questions. Please, ask away. An intelligent question. 
There was a good deal of debate about that in our first weeks here. Does it refer to crimes or to some other ill-defined wrong? Of course, everyone agrees on the basics. No theft, no assault, and certainly no murder. But beyond that, it was more difficult to reach a consensus. What about lying, insulting someone, blasphemy, trespass? trying to escape, bribery, infidelity, suicide. As magistrate, I had to exercise leadership, and so I made a decision. We must uphold the laws of the Empire to a standard never before seen. And we must honor the peace of the gods, the sacred accord between the gods and the people of Rome. It is only by offering the gods the proper respect that we may prosper as Rome has for centuries. Barbaric? Barbaric? What are you talking about? The Empire is the most civilizing force in the known world. Rome is a beacon of light in the darkness. For 800 years she has borne great statesmen, philosophers, poets, artists and engineers. We have comprehensive laws protecting the rights of our citizens, which have unified countless warring tribes all across the Mediterranean and beyond, from Gallia to Judea. All our citizens are treated the same, regardless of the color of their skin or their sexual preference. Can you say the same? When our people are starving, they are given food rations. And when they are wronged, they have the right to bring the guilty party before the magistrate. Our laws forbid treason, murder, assault and rape, as well as theft and arson and so on. No other civilization in the world is so advanced and you have the, the hubris to call us barbaric. But our gladiators are almost all volunteers seeking glory, or condemned prisoners who would have been executed anyway. I do not see the harm. Of course, what else would we do with those prisoners of war who would otherwise have been executed? And besides, there are laws for their protection as well. Of course. But with fewer rights come fewer responsibilities and the right to be protected by their fathers and husbands. Are you talking about our practice of decimation? Of course. We could hardly unite all these warring tribes without a disciplined, formidable legion. You mean the blasphemous cult responsible for burning down half of Rome last year? It's hard to blame the people for being angry about that. Well, right now, you're a long, long way from home. I have made my pronouncement on the subject. Unfortunately, there are still those here who resist whispering blasphemous and treasonous lies in the shadows. I would be keeping a close eye on them if I were you. You see, in my search for a way to save my people, I learned of an ancient ritual to Proserpina, the goddess of the cycle of life and renewal. It's said to open a doorway in time, so that if the unthinkable happens, one person can pass through it and travel back to the past. And when I saw you arrive in a flash of light from the goddess's shrine, I knew that person was you. You don't belong in our time, do you? Too 
2,000 years? That is unfathomable. Please, tell me, in your time, what did you see? What had become of us, of this city? I have imagined it, our downfall, a thousand times. But it still breaks my heart to hear the truth of it. All I can tell you is that it's a ritual sacrifice to Proserpina. I stumbled across instructions. I have to recite a prayer, and of course, as with all rituals, some sacrifice is involved. Usually that means wine or food, or in some cases, a live animal. In this case, the sacrifice is rather more costly. The life of the person performing the ritual. I don't suppose you saw any sign of me in the future? Ah, I assume that was me. If I'm forced to perform the ritual, it's going to cost me everything. You'll try to make sure I don't need to use it, won't you? Well, I suppose that's all I can ask for. Well, I believe you're in the best position to go around asking people questions. You're new here, and it'll seem perfectly normal. As for me, well, it pains me to say my attempts to impose order have not earned me many friends. I fear I may not even remain magistrate after today's election. The people here would only treat my curiosity with suspicion. You shouldn't have that problem, though, unless, of course, you get off on the wrong foot. Do you ever stare at a problem for so long that you can't see it for what it is anymore? What's needed here is a fresh pair of eyes. The less I prejudice the independence of your investigation, the better. Me? Why would you suspect me? I've just told you, I'm about to sacrifice my own life to ensure these people have a second chance. What reason could you possibly have to suspect me, of all people? I'm glad you think so. Without trust, without each other, we won't be able to prevent what is about to happen. Ah, so you know about that already. It's a devastating loss, of course, but that was over three weeks ago, and whatever happened to her, it didn't break the golden rule, so I don't think it's connected with our imminent demise. Still, if you happen to find her and return her to me, I would be eternally grateful. Well, all right. There are those who wish to vote me out of office so that they can pursue their own misguided political agenda. Frankly, their selfishness and recklessness risk destabilizing the entire city. I would be looking very carefully at them if I were you. You mean you couldn't speak Latin before you arrived here? How strange. But the gods are active here, and their temples and shrines hum with power like nowhere else in the Empire. Perhaps when Proserpina brought you here, she planted the seed of Latin in your mind so that you could better serve her. An unbeliever then? If you come up with a better explanation, I'll be interested to hear it. If I understand Proserpina's ritual correctly, that problem should take care of itself. Let me see if I can explain. If you manage to prevent the sin that breaks the Golden Rule, I won't need to bring you here. I won't create the portal, and you will never have been able to come here. 
Thus, you'll have created a paradox. If this occurs, you should be flung back to your own time, having changed the past for all of us. Make sense? Ah, good. So, are you with me? Can I count on you to figure out who's about to break the golden rule? Wonderful. Now, I need you to investigate the city, talk to everyone, help them if it'll win their trust. I authorize you to enter private homes and inspect possessions and documents, unless of course you're asked to leave. Figure out who the culprit is, and as soon as you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. Oh, and one last thing. If I were you, I'd start my investigation by visiting Lucretia at the Shrine of Apollo in the Forum. I heard wailing from there not long ago. Seems like something's not right. 